What's happening to my Jack family? Coach Scott here, jacked at the 40.com. For the past two weeks, I've been back at the gym, and without a doubt, I have noticed that my focus and effort have gone through the roof and have been taken to a whole new level. And it really had me thinking, damn, have I been selling myself short for the past little while here? I mean, all this time, I thought I was giving my very best effort, but stepping it up like I have for the past two weeks, clearly has revealed that I have a lot more in me than I had thought. And this experience was a great reminder as to why you and I need to frequently ask ourselves, are you giving your best effort to your workouts? Because focus and effort is the difference maker that separates the men over 40 who experience an incredible physique transformation and those who continue to struggle month after month and year after year. You can have the best, most strategically designed workout plan for men over 40, like you'll find over at jackedafter40.com, and still sell yourself short if you're not giving your best effort and we're Working that plan to your best of your abilities. And on the flip side, you could be following the worst designed workout program for Men Over 40, but if you're giving your best focus and effort to that plan, you can experience phenomenal results. In the past few years, there have been some research papers that have shown that we are definitely selling ourselves short. In some of the studies, the participants were asked to train to momentary muscular failure when they get to the end where you can no longer do a repetition. And then they were paired up with a personal trainer that was motivating them, pushing them to actually give their very very best effort and there was a big discrepancy between how many reps they thought they could do and how many reps they could actually do. And as a physique coach with 20 plus years coaching experience, I have witnessed this firsthand where clients thought they reached the point of failure, but with a swift kick in the butt, they're able to flip that switch in their mind, work through the fatigue, work through that burning sensation and crank out several more reps than they thought they had in themselves. So based on research and in the trenches experience, there's a good chance that most of us are selling ourselves short with our workouts and this is amplified by a lot of the typical advice that you see geared towards men over 40 that tell us that we should be training less and then we should be avoiding training to failure because there's a good chance that what you think is giving your best effort and training to failure is actually leaving a few reps in the tank. So when you start thinking to yourself, I gotta leave a few reps in the tank, you're just adding to those reps in the tank that you have already kind of avoided by not actually giving your very best effort, not actually pushing to true momentary muscular failure. So how do you know when you've actually reached that point of true momentary muscular failure? I think a lot of the common advice you're gonna hear is that when you reach that point, where you think your next repetition may get a little bit sloppy, you may end up grinding a rep out, that's when you're gonna stop. But that's still that's just still a judgment game in your head. You don't actually know that that next rep is gonna get sloppy. You may struggle with this last rep a little bit, um, but you still may, able, may be able to push out another repetition. It may be challenging, but it may not necessarily be sloppy. It may not be actually grinding the repetition out. So it's a, it's a bit of a judgment game in your mind. What I like to use is a gauge of whether or not I've actually reached the point of true momentary muscular or failure or not is to perform a set to the point where I can only perform a partial repetition. So let's use the machine fly as an example here. Uh, if I'm at the 12th repetition and I'm thinking in my head, I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to perform the next rep with good quality form. I'm still going to attempt that next rep. And once I get to that sticking point in the repetition, I'm going to stop at that point and lower the weight back down. And because I can't complete that full range of motion with that repetition, I know I have definitely reached that point of true momentary muscular failure. And that is not grinding out the set. That is not forcing a repetition. That is not getting sloppy with the movement. If I had tried to force out that full range of motion using a lot of different supporting muscles, using some body English, that is grinding out a rep. And that's something that I definitely try to avoid, especially training over 40. That's gonna make it tougher to recover from and definitely going to increase your risk of injury. But when you finish with just partial repetitions, that range of motion that you are able to work in is still quality form. You're just not able to perform that full repetition through the full range of motion. So it's a great way for, you know you can't complete another rep. That is indeed, you hit that point of true momentary muscular failure in a good, safe, effective manner. But it's been over for you need to be smart and strategic with this approach. This is not something you're gonna use with every single set. It's not something you're gonna do with every single exercise. This is definitely not something you're gonna do with the bench press, squat, or deadlift. You try to finish with the partial rep with the bench press, you're gonna end up with that bar in your chest. You're gonna end up hurting your back, putting yourself at great risk of injury if you're doing this with a squat or the deadlift. But something like the, the machine fly, like the hammer strength chest press, dumbbell bench presses, leg presses, leg extensions, there's so many different like isolation exercises that using partial reps to finish come in really handy. When it comes to how often you should be doing this, I would save it for your last set, best set, so the first two sets, leave a rep in the tank. And the last set, you can go for the last set, best set, and finish with partial reps. And then use that as a point of reference. If you were able to do 
two to three more reps than what you were able to do the first two sets, then you left two to three reps in the tank uh, those first two sets. So you'll know the next time uh, what kind of weight you should be using if you need to bump it up or what you should be aiming for in regards to uh, the rep range in order to reach that point of true momentary muscular failure. And aside from partial reps, there's a lot of really fun set extending techniques that you can utilize to train to the point of momentary muscular failure or even safely beyond that point of momentary muscular failure. I've covered this in a few videos in the past. Uh, some great techniques to train to uh, momentary muscular failure would be to uh, utilize a slow negative on that last rep. So you get to that point where you're thinking in your head, I'm not so sure if I can perform another repetition with good quality form. Instead of trying to perform it and doing a partial rep, you would just on that last repetition that do a nice slow negative on that dumbbell bench press, for example. Or you could finish the set, you get to that point where you're not so sure if you're going to be able to perform another repetition with good form and you hold the stretch position position for as long as you can. So you're in that bottom range of the motion with the dumbbell bench press and you may try to hold it for 15, 20, even 30 seconds there and just really keep the tension on your chest muscles and just really, really pushing it to that point um, of true momentary muscular failure. So even though you can't push up another repetition, you're able to hold it there for an extended period of time. And if you want to extend this set safely beyond the point of momentary muscular failure, you could do something like a drop set where you reduce the weight, perform as many more reps as possible, reduce the weight, perform as many more reps as possible, re reduce the weight one more time, perform as many more reps as possible. Or you could do an extended rest pause set where you um, perform as many, as many reps as you can for that last set, rest for 10 seconds, do as many reps as you can. Rest for five to 10 seconds, do as many reps as you can. Rest for five to 10 seconds, do as many more reps as you can. It's just a great way to um, just take that muscle beyond that point of momentary muscular failure where you're not grinding out any repetitions and you're not causing any added stress or strain on your joints. You're not grinding out any reps. Um, you're not forcing anything out. You're doing it in a safe, effective manner. It's really gonna to tap into a lot of muscle fibers that often don't go used just with traditional sets that you're performing. But the biggest factor when it comes to giving your best effort in the gym really comes down to mindset. It's being able to flip that switch in your mind and get comfortable with the uncomfortable. For example, when you're doing a leg extension or a leg press and you're feeling that burning sensation in your thighs, it's working through that pain barrier, going to your happy place and cranking out more reps in spite of feeling that intense burning sensation. What you don't want to happen is your mind to quit before your body does. So sometimes it can be, music can be very helpful. It can help you get to that place, get focused on the music uh, rather than the burning sensation in your thighs. For myself, I love these Project Rock shirts, the Project Rock collection, hardest worker in the room. I'm not going to be wearing this shirt in the gym today and not give my best effort in the gym. So um, just wearing clothes that uh, you, you've seen me wear, the Earn It shirt, um, through the work, Earn It through the work, this whole Project Rock collection just motivates the hell out of me. I see myself in the mirror training, I'm like, I've got to give my best effort. You combine that with the music that I'm listening to and just the willingness to to test my limits, to thrive from working through that kind of pain barrier. Not the physical hurting pain, but that burning sensation, that the muscles being on fire kind of pain, pushing through that and really making sure that I am giving my best effort possible. But like I said, really comes down to not allowing your mind to quit before your body does. And now the question is, are you giving your best effort to your workouts? Let me know in a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. It includes a free seven-day sample meal plan as well as how I structure my workouts for men over 40 to help you get in the best shape of your life while living life to the fullest. Have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.